Yo, Ryan O, behavior analyst and creator. All things behavior analysis is what you'll find on this channel. We like to nerd out on psychology here and today extrapolating a bit more on a previous video called The Functions of Behavior. In it, we leaned upon Cooper, Heron, and Heward's 2020 definition that describes a function-based definition as one that designates responses as members of the target response class solely in the terms of their common effect on the environment. So far, we're talking about behavior that has been influenced by the environment, specifically through changes that occur after our behavior, the consequences of our behavior. So for an example, let's look at ways in which you may obtain attention from someone. What are some of the ways that you can get someone's attention? While the possibilities are endless, some common ones are calling, texting, DMing them, or maybe more subtle things, like maybe some subtle eye contact across the room or glancing across the room, you know, just kind of casually in like a bid for attention. Now it's important to note that all of what I just described and many others you've likely thought of are all going to be different in how they look or their topography as we say. None of what I shared occurs in the same way or the same form. They all look a little bit different, but when seeking to obtain someone's attention, you could see how any of these may be effective and perhaps even different contexts may call for you to engage in one form of this behavior over another. But there's a common issue with this approach. That is, they all have the same effect on the environment of receiving the attention, thus they have the same function of attention. But there's a common issue with this approach, which is that behavior is then lumped into this one category of attention maintained behavior, or it can be. So let's use an example to illustrate. If you walk into a classroom and a teacher says, I'm just not sure what to do with Johnny's behavior. All he does all day is just seek attention. How much does that actually tell you about the potential reinforcers maintaining Johnny's behavior? Well, we know that it is very likely to include someone else's attention, but whose? Is it the teachers and other students? What kind of attention? Because that can definitely matter. Let's say that attention is in the form of other students laughing. If you're seeking to influence that, how are you going to get the other student to help out by perhaps changing when they laugh? What if the attention is from the teacher and it's what many would deem to be like a very typical response, something like saying, Johnny, please don't do that. Focus here, please. Well, they reorient Johnny to the task at hand. All these potential examples and any others that you may be conjuring up yourself right now would meet the function-based definition of attention maintained, but each would require a specific effect on the environment to be identified and experimentally described prior to being able to influence it in any particular way. Now, I've got one more quick example here to, to illustrate a point. Everyone, to some degree, has behavior that is attention maintained. Perhaps it's texting your best friend or your significant other, or perhaps it's going to a group night out or a dinner with a family member, whatever it may be, if I were to lump it all together and I said that all of this was then attention maintained, does it really explain anything? It often leads to more questions due to the vagueness or it's lacking context. To dive into that lacking of context a little bit more, ask yourself this, is there certain times, for example, like when it is appropriate, you think, for your boss to praise your behavior? That's attention maintained if you keep engaging in it based on the attention they provide, but what form of attention is actually maintaining your behavior? What if they praised you in front of the whole team publicly? Is that likely to be a reinforcer for your behavior? What if they did it more discreetly in the form of like an email or as they pass by, you know, just quietly saying it to where only you could hear it? The point being is that if I treat all of these forms of reinforcers or effects on the environment as attention maintained behavior or attention in general, while I'm not wrong, I'm risking miscommunication and misunderstanding at best well, I could just stick close to the original definition of how we diagnose, label, or communicate behavior as just talking about what that specific behavior has in regards to the effect on the environment. What is the effect it has on the environment? Sticking to that, the effect on the environment. Have I said it enough? All right, quickly, I need to pause real quick though, because this video is brought to you by patrons, people like you that support my efforts financially. For three years now, I've spent time and lost money, actually lost money creating these videos because while I think they're important, the field's important, and they're important people doing important things that need to be heard by people like you. So if that's something you're in for, consider checking out Patreon down below. There's a link there. I also have a lot of continued education classes at thebehavioracademy.com that helps fuel this channel. So now, now that that's done, uh, what's the solution? Well, first, sticking to just a clear explanation of the function through our definition. So something like Johnny's behavior is maintained by teacher redirection and occasionally peer laughing. But if you're forced to, and I really don't get why we should be less precise, but if you have to, you can say in a way that at least conveys some of this, such as Johnny's behavior is maintained by attention in the form of blank. Add your descriptor there. A science behavior, requires precise terminology so we can categorize and understand 
the larger functional relations or patterns of human behavior. If you want more of this or even why I think this line of thinking in large functional categories is confusing altogether, check out more of the playlist over here on the channel. And I hope you learned something. Like, share, subscribe. It actually makes a difference. Uh, let me know your comments down below. And uh, if you, again, if you want to support this channel, down below, continuing education courses, Patreon. Thank you so much. That's your daily beat.